So uh, I'll call the Women Hills Metropolitan District Regular Board Meeting uh, for Thursday, April 22nd at uh, 5.31 p.m. And by roll call, Troy Stenson present. John Erickson present. Stacey Popovich present. Sherry Ringen present. And John, that's you, right? Present. All right. That's five. Uh, we do have a quorum. All right. And so I'll motion that we move to executive session for the determining positions relative matters that may be subject to negotiations under CRS 246424E, namely the service plan and bond proposal and personnel matters under CRS 246401F1. Be in regards to HR payroll and staff. That was a motion. Is oh. there a second? <laughs> second. All right. A motion by myself and a second by Stacy. Any? Uh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, uh, now be an executive session. Okay. We got everybody in? We do. Okay. Uh, item four, President's welcome and remarks. Uh, welcome everybody. Um, this hopefully will be our last Zoom meeting. Uh, we're gonna try to go to in-person next month. Um, hopefully things, keep trending the way they're trending and we'll be able to get back in regular meeting room and have our meetings next month uh, in person. Uh, thank you all for being here. Or I, being there, I should say. All right, somebody have the, Daniel, did you have the flag deal or? I do, it's coming up right now. Somebody want to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? No? <laughs> Anybody? I will. Jerry? Who? Who was that? Stacy. All right. Fire away. I pledge allegiance. To the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and to the to republic, republic which, is which it stands, stands. One, nation. one nation, under God, under God, under God. Indivisible. Indivisible. indivisible, with liberty, with liberty, with liberty. justice for all. Thank you, Stacy. You're welcome. Okay, uh, item five is approval of agenda. I seen the last. Hang on, I seen the last minute agenda come out when I got off the water this evening. Is that this one or what was wrong with that one? The other one. The dates are off. It just said, yeah, March instead of April. Okay, all right. Okay, now we can go. Motion to approve the agenda as written. I'll second it. Yeah, yeah, a motion by Neil and a second by Stacy. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? That motion carries. Okay, approval or disapproval of the board minutes.
I'll motion to approve the minutes as written. Thank you. Motion by Sherry. I'll second. A second by Stacy. Any other discussion? No. All in favor of approving the minutes as written? Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Anybody opposed? Item seven is attorney's report. Ted, floor is yours. Not much to report. Um, I've sent a letter to Cherokee uh, regarding bad water quality. Jerry can give you the te technical explanation of it. We gave him 30 days to respond or to fix it. And we're in the beginning portion of that 30 days. So that's yet to be resolved. As to paintbrush, um, I've been asked repeatedly about what's happening with paintbrush and the answer is always the same, nothing. Um, they've told me they're going to give me a response. I haven't got it. Um, uh, tired of, well, I'm not their babysitter. I'm not going to pester them. So nothing's happened with paintbrush. So that's where we are. And those are the only two things I have to report unless I forgot something else that somebody will remind me of. Yes. So is there any, uh, I, as far as paintbrush goes, I know we were talking about uh, redoing that IGA. Um, have we looked at what we would need to change in that? Jerry has has had a list of things to change. Yeah, I I don't. I think that the IGA would uh, have to be um, just completely rewritten. You know, this the current IGA was. Uh, is is quite old. It was written before we had a new wastewater plant. It was written before new regulations had come out. Um, there's an awful lot that has happened in the time since that IGA was written. Um, uh, certainly there was no allowance for an increase in tap fees. Um, and and the, this this uh, argument about rates is just beyond me. I, you know, we have a wastewater plant. We set a rate on what it takes to treat waste, and uh, you know, it's again, it's like having an opportunity to argue with MBA or or Black Hills Energy or something, you know, concerning their <clears throat> what they're charging us. Um, it just doesn't happen. I mean, you might voice. Might be able to voice a concern to the utilities commission or something, but you know, basically, utilities set their rates, and that's that's final. And um, one thing that you can do is compare rates to other districts, and to see if they're reasonable. And certainly ours are. So um, uh, I think the IGA just has to um, be rewritten. Um, certainly under uh, with the understanding that you know it doesn't address the 13 million dollar expenditure that we made on a new wastewater plant so um, and as well as the new regulations that are coming down that nobody could have foresaw so um, that's that's my stand I would only footnote that we've had no discussion about the IGA we, we can't get over the hump of their current objections un, unclear to the current situation. So uh, there's that's kind of step one and we're nowhere on that. So the yeah. IPA um, has, I mean, we've made the point in writing that we want to discuss the IGA. Jerry makes the point regarding the finances, which are way out of whack, um, but we've never got there because they're objecting to where we are. and. I've tried to make the point innumerable times that they don't get to approve or disapprove um, our budget. We welcome their input, but at the end of the day, Woodman is going to make its own decisions, and if they don't like it, go someplace else. <laughs> so we got the 30 right. days. 
cooking on Cherokee and we got nothing cooking right now on paintbrush. And I've reminded them several times and still got nothing back. And when did they say they would have it back to you initially? Cherokee, uh, excuse me, uh, paintbrush? Yes. Uh, well, the scenario was um, we did get, we had our meeting, we had our discussion. They were to give a response, which they did. Jerry prepared a uh, reply uh, and, and sent it. And then they were going to respond, if you will, because it was not clear how they were responding to this whole scenario as it had developed. And they were to respond and they haven't. And they've told us, the lawyers told me several times they were going to, but they haven't. So that's where it is. It's nowhere right now. So can we present them with our idea of here's our new IGA with you? And then where would we go from there? We can do that. I'm not sure that it would work because we've got to get over this initial hump, but I'm not saying we can't do it. We, we could draft a proposed new IGA. I'm just questioning cranking up the, the fees to do that when we can't get over, we can't get the first base on the current stuff. So I'm not saying no, John, I'm just questioning whether that's the appropriate use of time. I was just trying to see how we could move this process forward. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying we, Jerry has replied several times. I've had multiple discussions with the attorney. Um, other than a cattle prod, I don't know what the source is. Okay. Yeah, I think I, the, you know, we have some, we have a few IGAs and, and I may be confusing them, but, um, it's not unusual for an IGA to have a clause in there that it, it should be reviewed annually. And uh, I don't know that, um, you know, we've have really been, anyone's been following up on that on either side of the, of the aisle. Um, but I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if there was wording in this paintbrush IGA to that effect. But even if there isn't, that's, I mean, in some sense, it doesn't matter because we can review whenever we want to review. We, um, it, it's just, it's been stuck because they haven't been really interested in talking about revising the IGA. They're focused on the current scenario and I'm prodding them and they tell me they're going to, to give us specific objections and we haven't got them. And they're paying the current rate, correct, Jerry? Yeah, they're, they're paying our current rate. Uh, they, they don't have any choice, you know, seriously. I mean, it's the, it's the rate payers, the, you know, the residents of paintbrush that uh, pay the rate, um, not the, the district, you know, the okay. district has nothing to do with it. So, um, and, and there is a reason why we bill every resident for, uh, for uh, service. Um, because before when paintbrush, the district would collect the fees, they wouldn't pay us. Um, the other thing just to, uh, just to, uh, as a reminder, I guess, um, oh, good grief. Now I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. Jerry, the <laughs> second, second thing that goes is your memory. <laughs> What's the first? I can't remember. I thought so. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jerry, wasn't there a big question on how many taps they actually have? We thought they had so many. They thought they had so many, and it wasn't the same by a long shot. Um, their manager tried to calculate how many bills we were sending out, and he thought that we were very you know, that we were short quite a bit which we weren't, he just didn't know what he was doing, honestly. And, uh, but um, I believe this is my point, what, what I was gonna bring up earlier that I forgot. You know, when we asked, asked them a simple question, could you please give us your customer list so that we could check it against ours to make sure that everyone's getting billed. 
And their answer was no. So this is how, how much they like to work with us. Isn't that correct, Ted? Isn't that, isn't that exactly how it went down? Yes. I mean, it was, I couldn't believe it. Just flat out, no, we won't help you with that. And uh, so, um, uh, I mean, we, we took matters into our own hands at one time because we would get a tap fee and they wouldn't tell us when the house sold and wouldn't transfer the ownership. And uh, so we started billing the contractor for water and sewer to make sure that he made, made sure the transfer happened. Otherwise he would continue to get billed for water and sewer on that property. Um, and that worked out very well. But uh, prior to that, this has always been paintbrushes uh, problem. They or or you know, um, they they just have never been interested in in really assisting us in making sure that all the customers are getting billed. Um, like I said, it just was quite fascinating to me that they would, um, and there there really wasn't any thought given to it. He just came right out and said, "No, I won't do that." So um, it, it didn't seem like an unreasonable request to me. And at one point in time, we discussed that with all the new stuff coming on board that we no longer have any available taps for paintbrush. Have they been notified of that? Well, uh, that isn't exactly the case right now. Um, the IGA is written so that um, if we have available uh, capacity that, uh, that they are entitled to it. However, you know, um, there are things in the works, you know, that, that could push us to that that point, and certainly that would be an opportunity to uh, uh, bring them to the table. I would make a, a footnote comment about the annual matters. Um, there is an annual element in the budgeting process. So, if there's uh, changes in in the fall, there's the October first date and so forth. <clears throat> that's where those that detailed information is to be provided. But it doesn't mean that they get to approve or disapprove it. It just means we're providing the information. So that that annual element is already there. That's all, Jerry or Troy. All right. Not much. Or, hi. Not much. Approval, disapproval of the financials. Item eight. I had a question for Rachel. It looks like our payroll expenses for QuickBooks came in for another month. I thought we were done with that last month. It was like halfway through the month. So the first payroll of the month was QuickBooks. The second was with BBSI. And then all of April was with BBSI. All right, I'll I'll motion make a motion, motion to approve the financials. All right, I'll second the motion. Finance. Yeah, motion by Stacy, and I'll second the motion to approve financials for March. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item nine, Parks and Rec report. Okay, um, start off with maintenance. They are slowly getting the irrigation system uh, up and running. Some parts had to be replaced as far as sprinkler heads and that type of thing. Um, did a great job installing some benches over at the basketball court at Balkan Park. Uh, and they did an awesome job uh, installing 10 community garden plots, which I'll kind of explain further on in uh, the report over at district office. If you haven't seen them uh, look really good. 
and they've started painting uh, some of the locker rooms and bathrooms at RCE just to kind of match the uh, front lobby and that area. Um, so yeah, great job by them. Uh, RCE Edition, they've done a little bit of dirt work, uh, I believe today um, or tomorrow, they were supposed to deliver some more dirt, uh, start working on that. They are waiting for that gas line and electric line to be relocated and then they can finish that dirt work. Um, I believe that's May 6th. I don't have it sitting in front of me, but I know it's the first week of May uh, that they're supposed to do the gas line and uh, electric. Um, as far as the parking lot, um, trees have been cut down, uh, branches and that type of thing have been removed. Uh, some of the trunks are still laying there. I believe they were supposed to start that uh, tomorrow also. Uh, last email from Elliot uh, talks about today or tomorrow uh, starting to demo that parking lot area <clears throat> and get the ball rolling on that. Um, so that's kind of where we are with the new addition. Um, classes continue to grow. Attendance is really good. Um, Falcon bathroom, I'm kind of at a stalemate. I'm still waiting for architect two to give us his numbers as far as the design work. The first one did come in. I apologize, I didn't print it out, so I don't have it sitting in front of me, uh, but I do know that number was right around 31,000 uh, for that design work. Um, but I wanted to compare it to at least one other architect, if not two, um, <clears throat> kind of see where we are with that. So I'm kind of a stalemate um, with the bathrooms for the moment. Um, pickleball courts, I wanted to get the ball rolling on that. Um, kind of reach back out to some of the vendors just to get some new estimates or updated estimates, I should say, as far as material and labor and install. Um, just knowing that we kind of ran into that with the new addition. So kind of get ahead of that one. But uh, my goal was to kind of make that a priority right now and, um, and try to get that, that going and get that installed. And hopefully people can use it latter part of the summer and into the fall. Um, so for me, that, that might take priority right now over the bathrooms just because I'm at a stalemate with uh, the architects um, getting information back from them. Um, sponsorships, promotional stuff. Uh, we've done a really good job just kind of getting different people to sponsor. I think we have eight or nine for the golf tournament already. Um, disc golf sponsors, uh, they kind of trickle in. I believe we got one last month. Um, you know, another permanent sign for that. Uh, concert sponsors, we kind of had a uh, realtor reach out a little bit back and that's kind of taken a life of its own. We have um, Stratus IQ, they've reached out, they want to sponsor two concerts also and kind of get their name out there and do some more promotional stuff with us and for themselves. So uh, I think we're going to take advantage of that also. Um, Upcoming activities, we have a, a million of them going on as far as baking, cooking, soccer, basketball, football, all baseball, all camps. Um, Antlers uh, annual golf tournament is coming up in July. Military Appreciation Day. Um, we've kind of grown that concept also. We've reached out to some vendors. I believe we have 10 or 11 signed up uh, already for Military Appreciation Day, which is May 15th. Um, American Legion is coming uh, to uh, set up a booth. We have some bounce houses, two climbing walls this year. Um, Girl Scouts are coming back to sell hot dogs, ice cream truck, obstacle course. We have a whole bunch of different stuff going on. So really like to want to grow that, um, that event for us this year. Um, on a piggyback on that, I know I didn't put it in that letter. Uh, May 6th is National Day of Prayer. Um, the American Legion, uh, local American Legion 2008, I believe, um, reached out to us. They want to use Balkan Park to do a um, day of prayer and kind of a uh, just a nice gesture for first responders, military, including police. They've reached out to nurses, all sorts of different people, fire department. Uh, so that's taking place one o'clock, uh, May 6th. We're helping them out as far as just chairs, a speaker system, sound system for them, that type of thing. And um, should be a really cool uh, event. And the guy has obviously invited all of us to uh, be part of that or come by and, and check it out. Um, in exchange for that, he's gonna come on the Military Appreciation Day and do uh, 
a little ceremony and thank you for uh, for the military families, a 15, 20 minute type thing for us. So um, kind of a, a cool opportunity for us there. Um, this golf tournament kind of took on a life of its own. Um, gentleman in the area reached out. He was able to find um, a contact at the National Amateur Disc Golf uh, Association. Um, they're running the tournament for us this year. They have 90 participants already signed up for us. Uh, great PR opportunity for us. Kind of all these people coming from all over the area um, to, uh, to play our course. So uh, should be a really cool event. Kind of looking forward to watching that. <clears throat> um, we get a kickback per participant um, for just kind of offering our golf course uh, that day, which is pretty cool. Um, community garage sale and dumpster day. Daniel uh, has helped us a lot with that um, as far as getting the flyer out and uh, getting the, um, the link set up for people to register their house, what they're selling and that type of thing. And we've ordered a few dumpsters for the community kind of take advantage of that and uh, whatever you don't sell or spring cleaning type thing. If you, uh, you want to dump some stuff and feel free to use the, uh, the free dumpsters that day. So uh, those are all set up for us. Uh, community garden. Uh, we're going to try something different here. Um, we have built those 10 plots. We have gotten a flyer out there. Um, the idea is obviously to get some community involvement, uh, get an opportunity to have your own little garden plot, 10 by 10. We're uh, providing tools. We purchased a shed there and uh, tools, fertilizer, uh, starter seeds, things like that are gonna be at the, um, at the site, which is at district. Um, we're putting up a gate. So obviously they'll have access or uh, a code to get in if they've purchased a plot. We already have one or two, um, one definite and second one that's interested in purchasing a plot for this year. Um, and just a cool way to kind of socialize with some people as well as uh, um, kind of enjoy nature a little bit and grow some, some veggies and that type of thing. We had a lady reach out. Um, she's gonna offer a free gardening class on uh, I believe that's May 6th also. Uh, where we can go and kind of learn. Um, she has some sort of system or, or concept where uh, you don't need a lot of water to, to grow a bunch of these crops and um, teach us how to do that. So I think that'd be a really cool thing to pass on to the community afterwards. Um, Spring Soccer League, a lot of participants that has uh, had a few hiccups as far as the weather, but uh, we're kind of moving forward on that. Disc Golf League, uh, we ran that last fall. We had 11 participants. We have 22 this year, uh, this spring. So I think that's a great growth. Uh, we'll continue to kind of promote that for this coming fall also. Uh, Beautification Day, just because of the weather, we had to postpone that. So that's coming up this Sunday. We did have 27 participants signed up to help out the community. Everything from spreading mulch, uh, finishing off those garden plots as far as the soil, uh, painting some some railings and fences and that type of thing, and obviously cleaning up our parks and trails. Uh, we are down to 22. Hopefully in the next couple of days, we can grab a couple more and uh, help us out there. And uh, we're gonna put a barbecue on for them afterwards for some fun uh, and a thank you for, for helping us out. So um, that's coming up this Sunday. If you uh, wanna come out and help us out, um, more the merrier. So, um, Rentals continue to grow. Um, staff has done a nice job just uh, kind of promoting that and getting our spaces without um, taking too much out of the community. Um, I know that's always the concern, balancing that act as far as uh, making sure the pool is accessible by, by patrons and community members uh, versus renting that type of thing out or uh, aerobics rooms and so on, so on. I think we've done a really good job balancing that. Um, brings me to my last thing. Um, as we know, uh, capacity limits have eased up, uh, restrictions have eased up a little bit as far as COVID. Um, and the day that that article came out in the Gazette, I believe it was the 16th, um, we were inundated with phone calls uh, 
if we were opening up the FOB system or that type of thing. So I'm going to re uh, talk about this again. I know we've talked about it the last couple of months, but actually with the restrictions easing up, um, kind of had a game plan and I wanted to throw it at you guys and see if you're okay with it, uh, where we open that FOB system up May 1st, uh, gives us a, a few days to get that information out there um, to the people. Uh, we want to keep a front desk person in the evening. And in doing that, they can obviously make sure things are cleaned and sanitized each night uh, before the next day. Um, and then also keep a front desk person there for a few hours each uh, weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so that's one idea. Um, we do want to get rid of the sign up system. Um, just allow with no capacity limits at this point for us. Um, kind of open that back up and let people kind of come and go without um, inundating them with the phone calls and things like that. Um, and then obviously the masks are still mandated until May 16th, at least. Uh, my assumption will probably go a little further than that, but for now they're, they're hinting at May 16th, that may ease up. So we keep the masks, we keep the temperature checks, we keep the hand wash stations and the protocols for that. We get rid of the sign up system so people can kind of come and go. Uh, we open up that FOB system a week from okay, now. There, if you want it, I might eat it. It's been there. I'm sorry. If you want it, you're welcome to it. What, the, the piece of. Please the, mute your, your phone or your. <coughs> um, all right. So, um, with that, uh, I think it, it eases some things up for the uh, those early morning. I know there's a lot of people that want to get in there at five o'clock. We've been unable to man it at that point as far as finding somebody to, to work that early. Um, I think what I've kind of proposed is kind of a happy medium where we still have some people, um, you know, who are, are afraid of the, you know, people not wearing masks and that type of thing still can be monitored to a certain level. We'll get the word out there um, between now and then. Uh, the masks are definitely mandated. Wash your hands before going in. Wash your equipment after using it. Um, uh, get some for it. A little bit of self-responsibility here also, um, but kind of open up a little bit. So I'm gonna throw that at the board and ask you your thoughts on that. I say go, I say go with that plan. Okay. I say go with that plan. I agree. Those are filing guidelines. I think we're good. Sounds good to me. All right. Fantastic. Sounds I'm good. Out, work with Daniel to uh, start getting the word out to uh, the whole community that we're going to ease it up a little bit but not get away from everything all, all at once. So that'll be the game plan. Obviously, if we see something that goes awry, then we can kind of uh, put the leash back on it and reevaluate it. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. We have right someone in the audience that uh, has an open mic. Would you mind? Uh, muting your mic, please. Thank you. All right. Uh, water and wastewater report. Jerry. All right. Uh, wastewater report is and water report just indicates that our systems are operating um, well and our tests are on compliance for both water and wastewater. I uh, of course, everyone uh, realized we had a major water main break um, that was on uh, Mark, uh, excuse me, Meridian, Mark McLaughlin and Woodman Hill, Woodman Road. And um, fortunately that uh, break occurred um, between two valves where there were no uh, services. So no one was out of water while we did that repair. Um, Weather was kind of tough, made things a little more difficult, but uh, for AZ construction, I want you to remember 
Frazee Construction, because those guys save our bacon um, on water break, main breaks. Uh, this is the second one that they've been on, actually the third one they've been on, but the second one they've been on at that location. And uh, so uh, they, they are um, really um, been a, a help for us in responding to something like this immediately, especially in this time when you know uh, everyone's so busy, they're, um, uh, they, they immediately uh, spring a crew loose and equipment to come over and help us. So um, uh, my hat's off to Frazee Construction. Um, but uh, that that main uh, was quite a break. Uh, quite a break. It it spiraled in the pipe for quite a distance. We ended up replacing. I think it was close to 50 feet of pipe, and um, uh, so it was quite a large hole. And uh, the El Paso County and they determined that we had to close down Woodman between. Uh, Meridian Road and 24, the whole thing had to be closed down. And uh, until they could determine that that the road wasn't undermined from the um, from the water main break. So it was quite a disruption for the neighborhood. Um, it was, and it happened on a Thursday and they had everything back up and running again by Friday, which was uh, a real, real, real quick time, real quick turnaround. So. Um, uh, our crew, of course, it basically consumed our crew for the for that day and a half. Um, uh, they uh, they stepped up and and took care of business. So, uh, really appreciate everyone's effort in in getting that thing fixed. Um, um, I, I, we just take this time to you know plug again that uh, one of the things that that's a bane for the wastewater crew is that people put things down their drains, down their toilets, really, that, you know, that don't belong there. And they cause problems with our pumps and et cetera, and cause extra maintenance. And everyone's so concerned about keeping rates low. Well, this is one way you would, that everyone can contribute by making sure that they are, um, are not putting things down the drain that don't belong there. And um, because it does consume quite a bit of our time, it's hard on equipment, equipment is expensive to replace. So just a shameless plug there to, for everyone to pay attention to what they flush. Um, in, in the report, I, in the back of it, I just included the DMR. This DMR covers our, our monthlies plus a couple of quarterly uh, reporting periods. <clears throat> and it just gives you an idea of of what we have to uh, uh, do to comply with uh, with the state regulations, and if you look through it, you'll see some tests are required on a weekly basis, some on a daily basis, some some on a monthly basis. So, and obviously, a quarterly report is a test we do every quarter. Um, and for instance, that uh, the one test is a um, it's called a wet test, W E T which stands for whole effluent toxicity. And uh, that's a test that we do quarterly and they take part of our sample. And uh, actually it's a sample that's done three times in one week on three different days. And uh, we ship two or three gallons. It's been a while since I've done these, so I've, I guess I forget, but two or three gallons of sample to a lab where they um, put uh, either, the fathead minnows or uh, or serodaphnia into the effluent to see how they survive, if they can reproduce and et cetera. And uh, so that that is a test that we never were able to pass until we got the new um, the new uh, facility. Um, typically, what uh, causes the problem? They're looking for toxicity, and one of the things that's very toxic is ammonia. And until we could start removing ammonia with the new plant. We could, we rarely were able to pass this test. So um, anyway, I just wanted to let you see what we, uh, what we report to the state every month. Um, I did find, uh, of course, this this report looks entirely different when you're working with it on on uh, through your computer. But um, um, there is a total dissolve total dissolved solids TDS, and our uh, measurement was 500. 
milligrams per liter. So, um, so other than that, uh, the construction continues. You know, where bent grass is uh, is is uh, ramping up. Uh, they're uh, uh, really um, anxious to to get going on new filings. Uh, uh, the current filing that they're working on must be maybe two thirds complete already uh, from my report. Um, so um, that that's a lot of growth, a lot of tap fees and a lot of uh, new rate payers, which will help uh, uh, definitely our revenue stream, obviously. So uh, good thing for our, for our community. Uh, um, Falcon Marketplace course is is ongoing. I get more and more interest. Um, people calling, you know, get the tap fee um, amounts and and uh, et cetera. So um, uh, we're anxious to see some some construction start in that in that area. And of course, you know, construction is a huge boon for our businesses in the community, uh, restaurants and and the like. So. Um, I think that's going to be a real big plus for our, our community. Um, so that's, uh, that's about it on water and wastewater. Thank you, Jerry. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, item 11, items unfinished from previous meeting. Jed, did we ever hear back from the firehouse on the property that they would lease to us for a hundred years? Uh, it's funny you said that. I actually called Chief this morning. Uh, I was waiting for his phone call back. Never got back to me today, but I will definitely follow up again tomorrow. And uh, as soon as I have that answer, I can email that out to all you guys. Appreciate it. That would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? All right, any board follow up on older items that we hadn't already discussed tonight? I think we're on task as far as uh, time frame for the new rec center building, right? They're still looking at any delays or any additional delays that we've, they've discussed. Last uh, last communication with them regarding that was that it was going to be delayed till the end of October, uh, as we discussed last board meeting. I think it was uh, they were kind of um, hinting that they wouldn't have to pay the five hundred dollars per day uh, if they go past September 29th. Um, I think we all kind of agreed, kind of wait, see how the progress goes, kind of reevaluate or revisit that conversation, that email that Elliot sent out to us um, as we get closer towards September. Um, you know, I'm kind of an old New Yorker. I don't know, I'm antsy, I want it done already, but that's just me personally. Um, but I obviously I get there's a process and right now we're just waiting on that gas line, electric line to be moved and then you know, they're, they're saying that the dirt will be done and start pouring the foundation and kind of rock and roll from there. But, um, and then, awesome. that, yeah, so we're kind of at a waiting, waiting game with them right at the moment. Okay. I would just say that uh, we did our best to try to f uh, put off building that parking lot and save those trees. <clears throat> However, um, it, uh, it would have involved uh, five figures of, of, of our hard earned money and, and uh, plus uh, time and both of them uh, we weren't willing to part with. So um, it, just, it just got to the point that it just was obvious we we're not gonna win this battle. Um, so, hey Jed, I just was thinking about re-roofing the RCE. What did we decide on that? I don't, I don't recall. Uh, we had gotten an estimate from commercial roofing. Uh, we had gotten an estimate from 
I think it was Pikes Peak Roofing or, or whoever you guys had used to re-roof district a little while back. And Peak View. Uh, Peak View, thank you. Um, and we were kind of, um, those are the two quotes that have come in. Um, that's kind of where we're at as far as, uh, obviously it's not budgeted for this year. Um, so I think that would have to be a wait till till next year unless um, there's something I'm missing here. Okay, guys, I have to go to work. Y'all have a good night. You too. See you, Sherry. Yeah. Do we have any more information on what's going on with uh, I think the King Supers build out on the corner? And then uh, I just noticed today that they're actually putting up large streetlight poles over there by uh, uh, the 7-Eleven off of uh, Woodman. And Meridian. Yeah, they're putting in stoplight there. That was part of uh, Bent Grass's deal. Um, I think it's uh, uh, what's it? What's his name? Uh, Randy Case. When they came to us, um, that was part of their deal. Was they were putting in a street light there. Now I'm excited that they're getting it done. So you know, start seeing a lot less people get injured through that intersection. So it's just right by my house. And did we get a time frame on uh, uh, what they're doing with King Supers? What their what their plan is? Hey, I don't think they know their time frame. <laughs> King Supers has not been uh, uh, communicating their time frame at all, but there are other pad sites that are progressing. I um, there's a car wash, at least and there's a tire shop. Um, it uh, seems to me there's one other pad that was uh, moving forward. So, um, but uh, they, you know, that uh, wasn't going to commence until they had finished with the, uh, with paving and, um, and they, I know they were ready to pay before I went on vacation. I haven't checked to see where they're at, but I would guess from the weather that they probably haven't paved anything over there yet. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, I just saw them, you know, putting in shoulders and stuff like that. I didn't know if they were, you know, trying to push to have that open by, you know, this fall or if we were talking fall of next year. Yeah, if they had, if they had said when they were going to be uh, open, I, I don't recall. Um, but the, as far as the stoplights go over by 7-Eleven, yeah, that was a re requisite by the county that uh, Challenger could only build so many homes without uh, before they put up stoplights so so that that has to be completed in order for them to continue jerry question yeah regarding the car wash is there yeah. any special agreement regarding the volume of water they will use well that's going to be reflected in our rates and uh, i've been working with with rachel on on uh, determining our rates how we can incorporate it into our um, software and of course we were changing our software so that wasn't the time to to start uh, trying to um, uh, change things um, so um, what we will what our policy will be is your um, amount of water that you can use will be based on the size of your tap and then when you exceed that amount of water if you exceed that that amount of water then uh, the water uh, rate will go up exponentially. So um, the car wash actually, um, that pad, I believe was was designated as a one inch tap and they've requested a two inch tap. So they will be paying of course for a two inch tap, which is um, somewhere in the neighborhood of $140,000. And then they will also be paying um, a water acquisition fee, um, the difference between a one inch and a two inch tap, uh, which I believe uh, is uh, five SFEs and uh, at a cost of about just about $9,000 per SFE. So they will be paying that plus, like I said, at a higher rate if they uh, exceed the amount of water that they've been, that they've, uh, been allotted. So um, uh, I haven't had an opportunity to do a lot of research on it. I, the research that I did 
indicated that that it certainly car washes are recycling a lot of water. I just have not been able to find anyone that's so bold as to state how much water they um, are actually able to recycle. But um, you go to go to certain car washes and they actually post that uh, they're a member of some you know fraternal organization or something that you know and uh, that they recycle water and they're uh, you know therefore energy water water efficient and so um, uh, but uh, anyway good question we're we're definitely going to be implementing something to that effect so my my vague memory from a lot of years ago is that there ended up being a deal breaker problem with the car wash over the charges for the water could have been i think circle k certainly uh was coming up was going to put in a car wash and then right, they deleted it, it yeah that's who it was and then they deleted it um so um for whatever reason you know so um, these but, folks uh, are, these folks are going ahead without an agreement as to charges for the water yeah, there there won't be an an agreement for the charge of the water. It'll just be built into our rate structure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> no other items. All right. Uh, public comment regarding the current board business not on the agenda. Do you have any messages, Daniel? No. Going once, going twice. Okay, item 14, any other business? Okay, no, with no other business, can I get a motion for adjournment? A motion we adjourn. I'll second. Okay, we got a motion from John, a second from Stacy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries for. Right. Uh, Troy? Yes. You know, since we're going to have this open meet, I mean, this in person meeting in the future. And we've got this champion level fisherman on the board. Yeah, don't even go there. We could have a fish fry. <laughs> I don't keep any of we don't keep any of these fish we catch. They don't get turned back. Well, you can make an exception. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. No, no. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Good night.